Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to worship. We're happy to have you here worshiping virtually with us again this morning. Uh, praying that you are finding light and peace this morning. As we prepare for worship, let's take a look at a few announcements that we have for you this morning. Worship Nights returns this Wednesday, on January 27th on Instagram. You can join in on Instagram at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday evening. Our community food drive is Friday, February 5th from 6 to 7 in the Salem parking lot. So be aware of that. Drop food off. It's been a really wonderful mission for, for the community. Check-in and prayer is still happening Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays at 10 a.m. during the weekday. And that'll run through um, uh, February 17th, which is Ash Wednesday. And then we're going to move it to uh, kind of a midweek meeting during the Lenten season. Uh, don't forget about your prayer shell ministry too, Tuesdays at 10 a.m. And all of these links, of course, are available on Salem Happenings. Uh, a little note about that too. Uh, again, please be aware of all the different links that are available. Uh, I do receive notices uh, because I create a lot of the worship links. Um, I do receive notices in my email about people logging on to different um, uh, different uh, uh, either worship or, or check-in and prayer. And for example, a person I didn't know logged into a check-in and prayer this morning uh, that was scheduled for uh, a week ago. So I, I don't, you gotta be careful with the links. There's a lot of them. I know it can be confusing, but just uh, read those carefully to make sure you're logging on to the right, right meeting before you jump in. We're still collecting some gently used shoes too. Uh, if you wanna join in the fifth Sunday service project, it's souls for souls. Bring your gently used shoes to the church and we'll make sure that they, need, that they will get to where they need to go. Hey Greg, there's a drop off today from 12 to one. Um, Jeff Surrey will be there, bring your shoes. Super, he's gonna be back from South Haven uh, <laughs> where his screen is right now. And he'll be there to uh, collect those shoes from 12 to one, he said. All right, perfect, thank you. And then next week, after worship has concluded, we're gonna take a little bit of a break, but we're gonna do our annual meeting through Zoom. Uh, all the necessary documentation that you will need for that annual meeting has been attached uh, in your Salem Happenings email. If you have any trouble accessing those documents, call the church office or you can contact me too and I can help uh, you walk through kind of the downloading of those documents or getting what you need. Uh, recently, I had an issue in trying to download the documents as well. It turned out to be just a, uh, an updating issue on my own laptop. So if you need any assistance, feel free to reach out and we'll help you get what you need. And if you need uh, paper copies, we can make sure that those are sent to you this week as well. Again, welcome to worship in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's take a few moments to breathe in that spirit as we prepare our hearts and minds to worship God this morning.
let us begin. For God alone, our souls wait in silence. Our hope is from God, our fortress. God is our rock and our salvation. God is our refuge and our deliverance. Trust in God at all times, in all places. Pour out your hearts to the one who hears. All people are valuable in God's sight. No one is more important than another. Worship God, who is ready to speak to us. Open your lives to God's steadfast love. All power in the universe belongs to God, yet God depends on our faithful service. Hey, Stephanie, you're muted. Sorry. <laughs> we await your message, God of all places and times. Sometimes we do not like what we hear, but we know we need to listen. Your message is inclusive and fair. While we like to make distinctions that favor us and our friends, you call us out of our comfort zones to do new things and try better ways. You direct us to reach out to people with whom we seem to have little in common. Speak your truth to us in this service so we can carry it to places where you want us to go, to the people you are eager to reach. Amen. Our first reading is Jonah, chapter 3, verses 1 through 5 and 10. Jonah had a sense of urgency about time. He felt something big was about to happen. He said to himself, in essence, I don't have much time left. I need to act now. He understood the community's organizer's mantra. Thought does not create action, action creates thought. Ironically, we are often short-term when it comes to our anxiety and long-term when it comes to our hopes. Hope is for later, anxiety is for now. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time saying, get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it to the message that I tell you. So Jonah set out and went to Nineveh according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceedingly large city, a three days walk across. Jonah began to go into the city, going a day's walk, and he cried out, Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. And the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. When God saw that they saw what they did, 
How they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said would bring upon them, and he did not do it. Our second reading is from Psalm 62, verses 5 through 12. Psalm 62 is confession of trust in God alone. Any fan of literature would cringe at the shift from third person at the beginning of the psalm to first person at the end of the psalm. Yet this is not without intention. The psalmist is first acknowledging the tributes of God, like a hymn of praise. Towards the end, the psalmist shifts the lens from intrapersonal praise to an interpersonal statement of faith to God. For God alone, my soul waits in silence, for my hope is from him. He alone is my rock and my salvation, my fortress. I shall not be shaken. On God rests my deliverance and my honor, my mighty rock, my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, O people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Salah, those of low estate are but a breath. Those of high estate are a delusion. In the balances they go up, they are together lighter than a breath. Put no confidence in extortion and set no vain hopes on robbery. If riches increase, do not set your heart on them. Once God has spoken, twice have I heard this, that power belongs to God and steadfast love belongs to you, O Lord, for you repay to all according to their work. Cindy, David, thank you for that beautiful music this morning. 
Our reflection this morning is based on the gospel writing of Mark chapter 1, verses 14 through 20. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. As Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. And Jesus said to them, Follow me, and I will make you fish for people. And immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, who were in their boat mending the nets. Immediately he called them. They left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Friends, let us pray. Gracious God, here in this space, breathe into us your spirit, we pray. That the words from my mouth and the meditations of my heart may be wholly acceptable to you and to find a home in the hearts of these, your beloved. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. We're in the middle, uh, well, kind of in the middle, in the midst, I should say, of a series of call scriptures that typically follows the baptism of Christ Sunday. This week highlights the call of Simon and Andrew and James and John fishing with their father Zebedee. Jesus calls, they drop what they're doing, and they follow. Uh, grammatically speaking, just the way it's written, it's so sudden and it's remarkable. Jesus says, follow me, and the disciples say, okay, we don't hear any questions. We don't uh, uh, see any of them raising their hands saying, where are we going? Nothing. This drop everything and go. It takes an awful lot of trust to do that, doesn't it? Do you ever wonder if the disciples ever had a shred of doubt before dropping everything they own and walking away into the unknown? You all know the story of Jesus speaking to the rich man about uh, selling everything and following him. And the rich man fell in tears at the thought of doing just that. We wonder why. Was it doubt? Was it the unloading of all his creature comforts and daring to go where discomfort may sit? We really don't know the answer. We really don't know the answer why these first four, Simon and Andrew, James and John, just immediately, as the scripture calls us to to understand, dropped everything and followed Jesus. However, in all of this, we can observe that it takes a great faith in a person or an ideal or in a person's ideal to answer the call to follow me as the disciples did. And let's be frank. There wasn't any money in it. There wasn't fame in any of it. There wasn't any promise, but that of being close to God while they walked together into this fog of wherever they were going. It takes great faith. So let's talk about what makes faith great. In the 20 years that I've been in ministry, I've observed uh, some elements of what makes faith great. One that really sticks out, however, is an element of movement. I have many friends who will espouse the idea that uh, you just have to have faith and God will grant you whatever you wish. In other words, just sit there and pray and, and believe hard enough and you'll get whatever it is you want. Or um, my past, I've had friends who will question my relationship with Jesus Christ, asking if I have one, number one, and that that alone is all I need to have faith. Many of the answers that they are seeking when they ask these questions are quite restrictive or constrictive. Answers that 
diminish or serve to silence or act as an agent of omnipotent authority. Do it this way or there will be consequences. But like you, I have faith and I also have doubts. And I have doubts about my faith. The magnificent thing is that not one of my doubts requires me to lose any of my faith. In fact, the two, faith and doubt, seem to dance rather well together. And to me, that dancing metaphor is the essence of trust in its verb format. To have both faith and to doubt is to dance in our beliefs, to move, to act, to ask questions, to discover and to, quite simply, do. Think of it like a light switch, on or off. There isn't an in-between. It's not a rheostat in this case. To have faith, even an ounce of it, is turning that switch on. The same with trust in this format. You do or you don't, it's on or it's off. There isn't an in-between. Faith doesn't mean you can't have doubts. Any faith that teaches you that is trying to sell you on something and that something is probably spiritually abusive. In our story from the book of Jonah, we read a calling story that is filled with doubts. Now, for the most part, the doubts are left out of the part that Stephanie read. However, like Moses, Jonah tries to deny his call from God to go to Nineveh three times. He had a doubt in his call, and yet Jonah moves. Even if he's running away, Jonah moves. And as you heard Stephanie read from Psalm 62, the psalm on trust, Perhaps the disciples, as they were called one by one, may have heard the psalmist saying in the back of their heads, trust in God in all times, for God is your refuge. Refuge meaning safe space. Maybe they were listening to that as Jesus moved by them. I was having a nice conversation this morning with, with Cindy about our time in pandemic and, and needing to move. And so often we could, uh, the, the risk of a pandemic like this is, is to find yourself in a quarantine and, and feel locked in, unmovable, um, and we need to move. We need to move our feet because it's good for our physical well-being, which then affects our, our, our mental well-being, which uh, all of that affects our spiritual well-being. Quarantine isn't conducive for a great faith. It makes it harder. Now, historians might argue that, that the disciples may have been an overly simple folk to begin with. You know, this, this wasn't the A-team that, that uh, Jesus called to serve. Um, perhaps they were ready to follow a butterfly in the breeze. But I would disagree with those historians. I believe that these were folk of great faith awaiting someone or a moment that moved them in the gospel in the gospel from mark we read that jesus was passing along he was moving going somewhere simon and andrew followed and then our scripture says jesus went a little farther and again jesus said follow me and he reeled in james and john pun intended the work of our faith requires movement. You may have heard it said something like this, that, that prayer is, is prayer, but when you put feet and hands to your prayers, it moves and answers rise to the surface. This is what call is all about. And not just pastors are called. You too are called. And to my knowledge, there hasn't been a single leader that has led any of you in any call off a steep cliff of faith. 
maybe to the edge of it, but not over it. You know, in the next few months, Salem will be calling another settled pastor to its sacred space. This call is extended on behalf of the congregation through its search and call team, the team that all of you had had some input on selecting to do the work and you have placed your trust in them. And when that settled pastor arrives, you'll have an installation service. Uh, I always like that phrase, installation service. It reminds me of, uh, you're getting a brand new refrigerator, my friends, and you're gonna plug it in. You're gonna turn it on. <laughs> you're gonna start something. You'll have this installation service where you, your words, speak that in the sense you are dropping your nets and following that lead. You're flipping the light switch on. After that service, your work begins anew. It continues and movement is required. The one thing I take great comfort in, in your calling to a new settled pastor is what I observe in Salem and how you move with one another. You serve, you move your feet. And when you pray, you put hands and feet to your prayers. It's as if you at some time were standing on the shore or in a boat and Jesus passed you by and you heard Jesus say, follow me. And you said, okay. Today and in the days to come, may that response, the call and response, echo in your minds, have confidence that God is your rock, your redeemer, and you can follow into the unknown. You can respond in great faith. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. Friends, I want to invite you to take a few moments to center yourselves in the spirit of prayer. We'll have a few moments of silence to allow you to lift your prayers. And then I'll lift a prayer for all of us in this space together. Let us go to God in prayer. Gracious and merciful God, breathe into us your spirit. Awaken our minds and our hearts to hear the call of you through Jesus Christ. A call that is surprising, challenging, offers promise of great faith, and yet risks of stepping into something unknown. God, may we, when we pray, invite your spirit to shake us into discomfort, to those spaces we would rather not venture alone, but would venture with you. God, this world needs our hands and feet applied to our prayers for peace, for love, for us to carry the message of God as Jonah did, as Jesus Christ invited the disciples to carry that same message, so too have we been called to do this. For the gospel is indeed good news. 
in this gospel, this message of your spirit in Jesus Christ provides for this whole world health and healing. Opportunities to create heaven here on earth, that which you seek and desire. God, in your great mercy, hear our prayers, the prayers that we've lifted by ourselves, and hear our prayer for the world today as we continue to move forward following Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Beloved, we bring forward our gifts to God this morning, offering God thanks and praise for the abundance of blessings that God has poured out upon us, and for your generosity to the mission and ministry of Salem United Church of Christ. And in your generosity, the mission, the movement of Jesus' work continues. Let's take a moment to give thanks and praise for the gifts that we bring forward today. Let us pray together. God of steadfast love, we pray that you will love the world through the monies we dedicate today. We pray that your work of transformation will be carried forward by our gifts. As a church, we seek to follow where Jesus leads. As individuals, we heed the call to discipleship. Bless our efforts to fish for people for their sakes, not our own. Amen.
God sends us out into the world with good news. God directs us to warn and to give assurance. We are disciples of Jesus Christ. We have been commissioned and blessed. We go out as people who know our own weakness. We rise above our shortcoming in the strength Christ gives. We will trust in God at all times. We will speak God's truth in love. The reign of God is drawing near to us. It can be realized in our lives here and now. We accept God's rule among us. We are citizens of God's realm. Let us go forth into the world in peace. Be of good courage. Hold fast to that which is good. Render to no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Amen. How great the chasm that lay between us. How high the mountain I could not climb. Desperation, I turned to heaven, spoke your name into the night. And through the darkness, your loving kindness tore through the shadows of my soul. The work is finished, the end is written. Jesus Christ, my living hope. Who could imagine so great a mercy? What heart could fathom such boundless grace? The God of ages stepped down from glory to wear my sin and bear has spoken, I am forgiven, the King of kings calls me his own, beautiful Savior, I'm yours forever, Jesus Christ, my living hope, hallelujah, praise the one who sets me free. Sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared, The grave has no claim on me. Then came the morning that sealed the promise, your buried body began to breathe.
Beloved, may you hear and receive the call of God through Jesus Christ, and may you move in great faith. Blessings and peace to all of you. Amen. Amen.